Well, joining us this morning, we have uh, Kelly Clark joining us from Titusville Area Hospital. Good morning, Kelly. How are you? I'm good. How are you doing today? I'm doing well, thank you. Good to see you. Good to see you. Can you believe we're halfway through March? I cannot. I cannot. The weather's warming up. Everything's looking up, so that's good. Yeah. Well, hey, there's so much going on, and uh, some of it includes the weather. So. Yes, yes. So uh, we have our golf scramble coming up. It's May 25th. Um, you can register to have a team, or you can be a sponsor. We're also accepting uh, raffle baskets and anything that we could that you could donate that we could possibly raffle off. Uh, we're raising money for uh, new hospital beds, so all the funds raised are going towards new hospital beds. Um, like I said, it's going to be on uh, Wednesday, May 25th. Um, if anyone's interested, you can definitely call the hospital, ask to talk to the foundation office. Are you sure you want? them to do that uh yeah, <laughs> yeah definitely definitely want to golf <laughs> hey i tell you, this is this is one of those events that's a lot of fun everybody has a great time they talk about it, it seems like all year mm -hmm. and get yeah. excited when it comes around again yes and i mean it really does a benefit a, a great cause and it does yes. helps the all, community all around yes um we're really excited about our uh replacing the beds um they're older and it's just going to be really really great for patients to have nice new beds. There's a lot of great tech that goes into those beds, so we're very excited about that. We've actually already raised almost $200,000 towards this project. Wow. Yes, so, and that was through uh, individual donors, um, you know, past donors that we've reached out to and some grants that we wrote. So that's very exciting. So we're gonna be able to expedite this project and get the new beds pretty quickly. What's the goal? Uh, 385,000 is great. the whole project. So we're over halfway there. Yeah, that's exciting. It is. Now, uh, if everything goes to plan, when do you hope to have everything ordered? And um, So hopefully before July. Okay. Um, July starts uh, our new fiscal year. So hopefully we can get everything done before, before then. Great. Well, good luck yeah. with everything. That's going to be fantastic. Yeah. And uh, do you think folks in the community, I, I mean, I hope so, but um, do you think they go, wow, this is great that the hospital continues to invest in itself? Yes, um, we've had a lot of um, people, like I said, you know, that have gave a lot of money towards our large emergency department renovation. Um, and then we, we had our CT replacement project and now the bed project. And it seems to be, you know, people that have uh, donated for the emergency department have just kept, kept donating to us. And it's really great. Um, also, a lot of our foundations that we write grants to, they're the same way. Um, and I think just making consistent improvements and showing that, you know, we're, we're doing this for patient care is, is really helpful to our cause. Yeah, well, I'm sure they'd like to see, you know, a follow-up to see what's been done. And yeah. I'm sure those transformations have been amazing. Yeah, so when I first came here, uh, the, the emergency department was already, uh, the project had already started, um, but in different phases. So one of my jobs was to take, you know, the before pictures and after pictures, put them together and uh, show the foundations that really supported us, the difference between the before and after. And the pictures are are astounding. I mean, amazing. So. Well, that, that goes to that track record of, you know, excellence and mm -hmm. uh, the projects you guys are doing. You're not afraid to take on much bigger projects yes, either. Yes. Um, just in the short time that I've been here, which is two years, um, I've seen so many improvements. So much is being done. You know, everyone kind of comes together, like you said, like a community and, and really pushes through for these projects. And it's really great. Yeah. It's one of, and it completely changes the feel when you go in there. Uh huh. Yeah. A little brighter, cleaner, and not that yeah. it wasn't clean. It's just you know, it's amazing Updated. what a fresh coat mm -hmm. of paint will do, or mm -hmm. uh, just some accents in different places, yeah. and and the technology. Mm -hmm. And you know, with COVID, um, a lot of a lot of you know our older things weren't really COVID friendly. So we've been able to kind of introduce a lot of those things. Uh, if you've been in our lab, they redid our lab and enclosed enclosed that. It's it's really nice. Um, you know, our emergency department just happened to be being finished during COVID. So what used to be rooms that were just sectioned off by a curtain now have individual rooms that have glass doors that close. So a lot of improvements have really helped during the pandemic, actually. Yeah, so that's incredible. Yeah. Uh, immunity is community. Speaking of community. Yes. Immunity is community. So 
Um, don't know if you've heard, we're doing COVID vaccines. Mm, no. <laughs> so, Dare I ask you the uh, current state of everything in that after you get through this? Or? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So um, we have continued to have COVID vaccine clinics every Wednesday at the hospital. Um, you can sign up online for uh, uh, to get your booster shot, your first dose, second dose, whatever whatever you are in need of. Um, but actually, this in, immunity is community. They uh, This is the CHIC, which is also known as Crawford Health Improvement Coalition. So they uh, reached out to us and said that they want to uh, sponsor one of our clinics. So it's actually going to be on March 23rd, which is next Wednesday. They uh, got together and got some gas cards from Sheets, uh, Giant Eagle. Some local businesses have donated some things. They're bringing in uh, therapy dogs from uh, Paws for a Cause. Wow. And they are also bringing in some cookies from the local bakery. So um, they're all just doing this to kind of you know, see if anyone else out there needs any vaccination education or if they, you know, are just kind of on the fence, come on in. Um, so it's just one of one of the many vaccine clinics we're doing. But, uh, you know, this is just one that Chick came came forward and said, you know, we want to sponsor sponsor this and do some giveaways for folks that come in. Uh, Chick, I think, is one of the organizations that is spending um, a lot of time um educating the community mm -hmm. on like penny and mm -hmm. uh, some of those other things yes so so a lot of the members that make that up um is uh um smoking cessation yeah. um drug and alcohol awareness uh penny like you had mentioned um there's some other folks on there that do different things in the community um okay. so it's a it's a great organization so wednesday march 23rd Yes. It's the day between 2 and 4. Between 2 and 4. Uh, you can go online and sign up. You can also call the hospital. Um, if you don't want to go online, you can call the hospital and get registered for that vaccination uh, clinic. Great. Uh, yeah. And speaking of uh, sign up, we didn't mention this, I don't think, with uh, the golf outing. How do people sign up for that? The golf, uh, you can go online. It's also available online. If you go to our website, TiceVilleHospital.org, uh, you can click right on the golf scramble. It'll take you to a page. There's a lot of great information on there. You can actually pay and everything online, or you can call my office. I'll send out the information. Um, I can take payment over the phone. If you just want to do a raffle basket or do a donation like that, uh, you can also call my office. The number is 827-1060. Okay. Or you can just call the hospital and ask to talk to Kelly Clark or the foundation office. Okay. Well, there's so much you're working so on. Much. No, there is, yeah. Uh, and March, we're halfway through, but March is what? March is Colorectal Cancer Awareness Month. Okay. Um, so if anyone, you know, is on the fence or maybe has not been doing their regular appointments and they're uh, in need of a colonoscopy, you can give our hospital a call, the 827-9770, um, Dr. Rogers. Uh, he's our, our board certified surgeon there. He can take care of that for you. Uh, you can also talk to your PCP. Um, colorectal cancer is one the third leading cause of cancer-related deaths in men and women. Um, one of the main uh, ways to be proactive is through a colonoscopy. Um, it's recommended anyone over the age of 45, men or women, um, have that done every 10 years. Um, if you have any questions about it, definitely talk to your PCP. Um, people that are at higher risk for that or have a family history of that, um, they may recommend it sooner. Um, I know, you know, people that uh, are maybe children of people that have, have had this in the past um, the doctor recommends them getting it sooner but um, you know just being proactive is one of the main ways to I, uh, I don't know a couple of weeks ago I was doing some reading where um, a young mom mm -hmm. um, was diagnosed and I think in the article she was saying um, there were maybe some minor signs that she sort of ignored mm -hmm. and went in and had a checkup after after just well, waiting a while, but saying, well, maybe I should check it out. Mm -hmm. and, and I know the article said, you know, there's some little things that might come up that should say, okay, to you, I need to go get this done. But sometimes it's easy to ignore and worry yes. about later. Yes. And it, 
And, you know, and, and like we had talked about before, you know, especially now, people are kind of holding off on going to their regular appointments, holding off on going to see the doctor, you know. Um, but we're seeing a lot of that coming back, and people have just waited too long, and, you know, they really need to see the doctor. And well, get a lot back, can happen in two back, years, right? Yes, and, and get back to, to their regular checkups and regular wellness checks. You know, that's just as important as going to the doctor when you're sick. Um, is, is for those well checks and for the, the procedures like this that are just proactive. Let's do this real quick. You're watching the Morning Drill on stream television and on Armstrong's Neighborhood Channel and listening to it on the Allegheny News Talk Sports Network. Kelly Clark here with us from Titusville Area Hospital. Uh, marketing and communication specialist mm -hmm. is her title. <laughs> and uh, every month, Kelly, uh, you guys bring in some great uh, guests and you promote some great projects. Mm -hmm. um, we're not done because there's a lot more here to, to cover, but uh, <laughs> never a, a dull moment, is there? No, no. Um, for for a you know critical access twenty five bed hospital, <laughs> we uh, we really do a lot there, um, and we offer a lot of different services um, for that reason. You know. Uh, people that have a hard time, you know, nobody wants to drive to Meadville uh, when they can come, you know, right to the Titusville Hospital. So we do offer a lot of services that um, you don't really have to travel very far to, to well, receive. What's that, what's that mean to you guys or say to you guys um, when you have a response like that in the community? It, it, there's a lot of specialists. There's a mm -hmm. lot of, uh, mm -hmm. you know, really good doctors, uh, nurses, um, staff. Mm -hmm. um, that even for a small community, it's really important to have those. It definitely is. It definitely is. Um, you know, for for this area, you know, it's very rural. I, I mean, I drive a half hour just to come come to work. Yeah, and uh, that's going seventy five miles an hour too. <laughs> Sometimes. No. No. <laughs> no. Okay. Um, but yes, just to be able to come here. I mean, this is where my family doctors. Um, you know, and even we have where I live in Tynesta, we have a clinic right in Tynesta. That's well, where both my kids go. Yeah, so. I was going to say to even invest in mm -hmm. the outside areas yes. too. Yeah, we have an office in Tynesta, Titusville. We have an office in Oil City. Um, we have doctor's offices right here in Titusville. So, yes, we're kind of hitting all of the areas that uh, the community definitely needs health care. That's great. Uh, some other things uh, coming up. Uh, pediatric speech, occupational therapy screenings at yes. Tessalary Hospital. Yes, yeah, so we are offering those um, every month, every first Friday of the month. Uh, the next one coming up is April 1st. So these screenings are for uh, kiddos that are maybe have delayed speech or delayed motor skills. Um, you just want to bring them in and see what's going on. Uh, you can schedule an appointment online uh, or you can call um, the hospital and ask for the speech department. Um, like I said, they're offering them uh, first Friday of every month. Uh, they are a really great team. Um, I think I had Julia in here before. She's our, our OT. Um, I should bring our new speech therapist in. We actually have a new speech therapist. Yeah, She's great. great. Yeah, so um, it's a, a really great program. I think they had four or five kiddos uh, at our last screening, and they really just make recommendations uh, to where to go from there. Um, if you're already receiving uh, services for speech or OT, um, you can still bring them in uh, you know, and, and see how they're progressing. And I, I notice, and again, not to dwell on this, but even the last couple of years, it's been hard to get some of those services mm -hmm. with yeah. everything going on. Yeah, a, a lot of the services they were offering uh, were um, like telehealth visits. Mm -hmm. So I don't know if you've ever tried to or have watched online learning with kids that are <laughs> under the age of five. Um, you know, doing speech therapy through a telehealth visit is, you know, obviously going to have some barriers. Um, so I don't know that those services were really, you know, 100% what they could have been if they would have been face-to-face. -face. Um, so all of our services that we're offering are obviously face-to-face -face currently. And uh, I, I think it makes a, a giant difference, especially for, for kids. I, and that applies to a lot of things. Having mm -hmm. that face-to-face -face mm -hmm. connection is really mm -hmm. important. But yeah. I understand, too, that there's also some difficulty with that. Yeah. Um, and, and real quick, uh, April is coming up, and um, 
National Donate Life Month. Yes, so that will be coming up. Um, every year we participate in um, the uh, Donate Life, and it's really just a time where we focus on uh, eye tissue, organ donation, getting pe folks registered and offering education about what that really means, um, you know, how to get registered, how to talk to your family, um, different choices that you have in that. Um, so we like to take April and put out a lot of um, information about organ donation. We also talk to, like in the hospital, we do in services with our staff. Uh, we do a flag raising. Um, wow. And so HAP all, uh, teamed with CORE and they are, they do a challenge every year. Um, last year we, it, most of it was virtual, um, obviously, but um, we did receive the titanium designation. And, and what that really means is for every activity you do, you get certain points. For education that you offer, you get points. So they just uh, put that out there just to, you know, get the word out and get people involved and, and make, it a, make it important. Very nice. And yeah. if you go back, I think uh, the interview from last year mm -hmm. is available for people to go back and yes. kind of refresh. Yes, we had a, a guest on that was an actual uh, recipient of yeah. an organ, and she was really great. Uh, you, yes, you can go back. and She was on our Facebook page uh, and listen to her story. Um, there's so many great stories. Actually, if you go on donatelife.org, uh, you can read a lot of different stories of um, folks that are recipients and also you can read stories about family that had had lost a loved one and were the uh, the donor. The, and uh, there's just a lot of great stories about, you know, saving lives on there. Yeah, incredible. Um, how about a status update for the COVID situation? The COVID situation. Is that still happening? <laughs> Doesn't feel so, like it anymore. But. So our numbers are going down, which is really great uh, for this area. Uh, we experienced the same thing last year. Um, you know, as soon as uh, spring started coming, our number our numbers did start to fall, um, which is really, really good. Um, I know the mask mandate has been lifted for most areas. However, health care is still under a mask mandate. Um, so if anyone is entering our hospital, we still we still do uh, recommend masks um, just to keep everyone that possibly isn't vaccinated or maybe, you know, immunocompromised just to keep them safe. Um, that is is that a state level thing or federal? Um, so we have to follow state okay. uh, and the CDC. So. Um, and, and that's the same with, with uh, public transportation as well. That got extended into April, I think mm -hmm. April 18th or something. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. So, so like, you know, mandates change a lot. <laughs> um, so that is our current, okay. um, that we're still wearing masks. Um, and like I said, you know, you, we're still, um, having all of our services are opened, um, still having the, the vaccination, um, clinics. Um, we're definitely seeing a lot less numbers than we had in the past. I think most people, um, that are interested in receiving the vaccine have received it. We've given out over 9,000 um, vaccines. Wow. Is that, uh, is that like the full uh, one dose, two dose booster mm -hmm. type thing? Okay. Yeah, so we've given out over 9,000 um, vaccines, probably even more than that now. I think that was our last count. Wow. Um, so, and, yeah. and, and uh, you guys were one of the first hospitals around mm -hmm. here to get it. We were. We were, and I, I remember uh, when we first got it, it was, it was so exciting because, you know, we, our hands were tied for, for quite a while, and, and when we first received it, it was, you know, such a positive impact that we could, we could do something to co combat the pandemic, so it was exciting. Well, uh, Kelly, there's a lot going on. If folks have any questions, want to help, sign up for the golf outing, make a donation, mm -hmm. uh, what's the best way to reach you? Um, so the best way to reach me uh, for the golf outing would be the 827-1060 number. Um, for and any, that's the foundation side of it? Yes, okay. that's the foundation. Um, for anything else, um, like the speech or signing up for the COVID vaccine, um, any information about that, you can call the hospital directly and ask for the various departments. Great. Good to see you. It's good to see you. Man, there's so much going on. Um, yeah. You guys are doing wonderful things, so yeah. keep up the good work. Thank you. Sign up for we the golf outing. Take yes, advantage sign up of these for the golf outing. Yeah. And take advantage of uh, a lot of these screenings and things going on. So. Definitely. All right. yeah. Hey, thanks, thanks Kelly. Take care. You too.